Father God, we thank you for this new day and we thank you, Lord, that we can again gather together here as we spend this lockdown in our homes, but gather together to watch this online message. Lord, bless our youth. Bless the message that you have prepared for us and that Roxanne is delivering here this morning. Lord, please be with us in these times when things can feel so frustrating, when things just don't go the way that we would want them to, or when things just simply don't work out. Or maybe the people that we love are hurting us or doing things that frustrate us, Lord, not doing things the way we would do them. Please give us the peace to know that you are in control, that you hold all things together, Lord and that you are with us. So bless us now and bless this message. Bless the readings you have and the parables that we will learn from this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Amen. I wonder how many of you guys were triggered by the opening of our youth message this morning. The truth is that most of us are triggered by things that seem wrong, that aren't right. The problem sticks out to us so much that we cannot ignore it. And isn't this true in our own lives too? I know that Craig challenged us last week to be the believers of Christ, to remain true to our calling of being part of this kingdom of God. He spoke about us being the salt of the earth, the valuable children of God who have been called to preserve the life of those around us as best as we can. But honestly, when we look around us, we see the problem being huge, don't we? This is hard, isn't it? I know that even us as a church are focusing on gender-based violence for the next few weeks. And man, it just shows me that our world is dark and so much pain, so much hurt all around us. And it's easy for us to wonder, how are we meant to be the salt in in such conditions? It's the same question that the disciples wrestled with as they walked with Jesus. But I believe that Jesus continues to give us encouragement as he did for the disciples. And I'd like to encourage you to look at Matthew 13. Jesus begins this beautiful conversation with all the people gathered. It was a large crowd hearing what Jesus had to share for them, hearing how they are meant to be people living in this kingdom that is completely different to what the world wants us to be. And through him sharing these beautiful stories called parables, the disciples as well as others got to learn what it meant to be a true child of God in this kingdom of God. These stories Jesus told is called kingdom parables and each one of them are filled with so much treasure. I know that I don't have the full morning to share each one of them. And I know that last week I had the privilege of being able to share one with Denver on our um, church page on YouTube. So if you want to check that one out, go ahead. It's a powerful one. You might know it so well is the parable of the four soils. But if you don't know it or if you need to be recapped on that beautiful uh, parable Jesus speaks, speaking about what kind of heart do you have? Are you prepared to hear the true message of Jesus? Go ahead and look at that video also once you've watched this one. But today we're looking at yet another parable that Jesus is telling his disciples. And it's one of the parables that I've looked at throughout the many years and it grabs me. And I'd like to share with you what are the few things that stand out to me when I read this parable. So let's take a look at the next parable we read in Matthew 13 verse 24 to 30. And it's called the parable of the weeds or the parable of the tares. But I'm going to ask Charles if he doesn't mind reading that scripture for us before we dive into the lesson. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. 
Then gather the wheat and bring it into the barn. It's interesting to note that if you look through your Bible, Jesus then continues with the parables and he shares two more parables about faith that we know so well. I remember teaching them as Sunday school teachings, um, the faith of the mustard seed and a parable about yeast. But in the moment when the disciples have a time to draw away with Jesus, when it's just Jesus and the disciples, what is the one parable that's on their mind? What is the one that's troubling them the most? It's the one we read this morning. And don't we ask the same thing? With all this darkness and evil around us, God, can't you do something about it? And what is Jesus' response to his disciples? No, we can't do anything about it. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. So let both of them grow together until the harvest time. Wow. The disciples need an explanation, didn't they? And sometimes we need an explanation. Why is there so much hurt and darkness around us? And it seems like nothing is being done about it. Let's take a look at what Jesus says to his disciples. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. So there is one thing that stands out to me the most within this parable is this idea of not being able to uproot the weeds and being told that they are having to live together. And that I believe is what the disciples too are wrestling with is they saying to Jesus, can't you just uproot what is bad so that we're just left with what is good? And isn't that what we're all asking for around or so? Is there's so much hurt and pain around us can't we make life just a little bit better because it just seems unbearable and yet i believe that jesus has victory we read it in the scriptures is there will come a day where jesus divides the weeds to the wheat and there will come a day that jesus christ will have the victory i love it in the last few verses we read it says that the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom and then it goes on to say, anyone with ears, let them hear and they should listen and understand. But the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. How powerful is that? That there is victory. We have victory now. We might not see it all the time, but there is victory in Christ. And we're needing to hold on to that. One of the most powerful things that I saw within um, the preparation for today, and if you do research on this parable, you will see that the weeds don't look like weeds by the next morning. No one knows that they were sown. It's also interesting to note that they were sown during the night when the workers were sleeping. You see, when we're sleeping and we're thinking that everything's okay and we don't have to do any more work, that is when we seem to do the wrong thing and let the devil plant the seeds. And what's interesting to note is it takes quite a bit of time before they actually realized that there were weeds amongst the wheat. The weeds even looked very similar to the wheat for a very long time, giving the time for the weed and the wheat's roots to intertwine. So that is why Jesus says that they cannot uproot the weeds because the wheat will go along with them. Those that are completely firm in Christ, some, some may lose their faith when others are pulled out. 
it is in, it, it's such an intriguing thought this and it it's hard because we want things to happen now we want things to be sorted out when things don't seem right when there is one little thing that is completely wrong that we just want to fix we kind of want to push at it and say it's just something that needs to be changed let's change it now so that everything else will be fine kind of like my lego that i have this morning i don't know if any of you guys noticed that i've got lego next to me and there is one red block and if it was just tapped out of there maybe it would just look slightly better isn't it but you see the problem is is when we meddle in that it's not just the red block that is tampered with some may stay but others will fall along with my red block and that is such a deep message this morning is i believe that so often jesus tells his disciples and again he's telling us to is forget about looking at people around you right now is look at yourself he first wants to ask us and really wrestle with this idea of where are we in our walk with christ I remember I shared with you and I said to you, go ahead and listen to the video that um, Denver and myself did for our Sunday school group last week. I'm going to encourage you to go and do that because in that video we look at the four different types of soil that we may have when we hear the message of Christ and it questions, are we really ready for that seed of Jesus' word to grow in our hearts? Or do we have other things on our mind and we're not giving full attention to Christ? And are we just like the weed that should not be there? And yet Jesus' message today gives us grace. That there is still time. He gives us time to find her. And in this time while the weeds and the wheat are growing together, it's such a beautiful thing to read in the scriptures that the more that they grow together, the more it is evident that there is a difference. That powerful verse I read it and I'm going to read it again. It says the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. Right now when there is darkness, we have the possibility to shine for God's kingdom when we grow closer to him, when we focus on ourselves more than those around us. So let that be our challenge this morning, is to not look at anybody else right now, not look at the darkness, not be like the disciples that come and want to know about the weeds. And let us rather look deep within our hearts and ask us, yes, we are called to grow together in this darkness, but how am I growing to shine in the kingdom of God? Let us truly shine and I'm going to challenge you with the same kind of challenge Craig gave you. Last week you were told to be the salt of the earth. This week you are told to be the light of Christ.